Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Liars Club. I'm Felicia Michaels. And I'm Jessica Wellington. And uh, we have two amazing guests uh, here today at the Liars Club. Why don't you go ahead and introduce our first guest, Jessica? All right, this gentleman, uh, I met him on a road trip to Arizona. Arizona. Yeah, that was uh, quite a time. He's opened up for Bill Bellamy, uh, Mike Epps, and Jeff Garland. That's right. Right? This is Mr. Lionel Dalton. Hey, what's going on? Thanks for having me. Oh, absolutely. Welcome to the show. Our second guest is a gentleman that uh, I've gotten to know over the past six months. But he uh, is an opener for uh, Doug Stanhope, and he moved to Los Angeles about four years ago, and he's doing really well. Please give it up for Mr. Brett Erickson, Aww. everybody. Thanks, guys. I actually moved here from Peoria, Illinois. Oh. Which Peoria? is the hometown of Richard Pryor uh-huh. and Sam oh. Kinison. Really? True. Yeah. She and slept I, with Sam Kinison. I would just I say like, that all the time. <laughs> I would Wait. just like to say that uh, uh, as a Peoria comic, uh, no trio of, of comics have sold more <laughs> record albums than Richard Pryor. Sam Kinison and myself from one town. No trio from one town. Fair enough. We're the most successful three comics from any town. There Mm. you go. Pretty proud of that. You should be very proud of that. And uh, today we're coming at you live uh, from uh, downstairs at the uh, podcast room here at the Comedy Store. And uh, we would like to give a great shout out to the Comedy Store and thank you for that. And uh, for the people that are just tuning in for the first time, we are the Liars Club. And what we do is we ask two of our comedy pals to come on the show, tell two stories stories one is the truth one is a lie we try to figure out which one is the lie and i have to warn you lionel that uh uh jessica over here is the bad cop she likes to ask many questions say so, li- line it, lionel again lionel i don't know i can never Lana? say it. <laughs> no it's just like Lana? jf Lana? harris his name is j and then an f and i'm like jf i couldn't do it <laughs> like i'm, I'm not like that jf far. jf, JF? Or JF. Anyway, uh, so uh, so that's what we do. And we'll rotate the stories around, and uh, and we will be asking questions. And who would like to go first? Hmm. Brett? I'll go first. Okay, do it. Um, all right, two stories. First of all, let me just say that I am fascinated by your producer, Andrew Rose, who has 19 telephones in front of him. <laughs> yes, right yes. He's the this king of douchebaggins over don't, there. Yeah. Don't <laughs> interrupt really him. He'll, he'll lose he's track really of what he's doing. <laughs> I don't know what you're paying him, but it's too much. You can afford three phones. I'm killing it, man. Paying him nothing is too much. (laughs) All right. um, Okay. So uh, story number one. When I was 19 years old, Uh I went to a party in uh, uh, a little town outside of where I grew up. What was the name uh, of the little town? The little town. uh, I grew up in a town called Walnut, Illinois. Walnut, not Pierre? No, no. Peoria. Peoria. <laughs> Pierre is France. That's why. <laughs> also not Pierre. Uh, P- Pierre. <laughs> I didn't grow up. I didn't grow up in the big city of Peoria. <laughs> I moved to the big city uh, uh, later. I grew up in a town of a thousand people called Walnut, Illinois. Walnut. And uh, but this uh, party was at a nearby town called Tampico, Illinois. Tampico. Birthplace of President Ronald Reagan, by the well, way. Well, there you go. Wow, you got right some real winners out there. Uh, yep. <laughs> and uh, uh, so I, it was just, uh, it was, you know, it was like a teenage party, whatever. I was home uh, for the summer from college. Was there beer? There was beer. <laughs> there was marijuana. Uh, there were probably other things, too. But in, I was pretty... In near. Walnut, Illinois, there in was t- marijuana? Well, oh, yeah. Oh, really? It wasn't good. Yeah, that's like some dirt weed. <laughs> it, was, it was ditch weed. <laughs> But we had it, uh, and uh, I I got uh, really really drunk, and then of course being nineteen I drove home, and uh, on the way home I uh, put my car into the ditch and like into a cornfield, and I don't really remember it happening, but I do remember like going oh shit I'm not on the road anymore. Did I'm, you end up in the field? I'm in, the, or I'm in a cornfield now. What kind of ditch was this then? Well, I mean not, I'm just saying where I come from ditches are deep. Yeah, this wasn't deep enough to stop me from going into the cornfield. <laughs> okay. So I uh, so good I, sleuthing so skills <laughs> there, Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> Ditches are deep. <laughs> so I got out of my car and I uh, and it was kind of sm- smashed up in the front and stuff, and, it, and I was like, "Oh man, this sucks." So then I wandered back to the party, which was like a, 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 I don't know a mile. Was it in a home or a It was a out in the country. It was a, it was a home, but it was a, a farm. Okay. It was, out, it was out in the country. 
So I get back and I talk somebody into giving me a ride all the way back home. So I get home to Walnut, which is probably a 15-mile drive through the country. Because your car wouldn't start back up? No, it was. I didn't. Uh, I wasn't even sure where it was at that point anymore. Okay, right. so I get back to the party. I'm like, I just need to go home. And I'll, I'll figure it out tomorrow. Were so you th- drunk? Really She's, drunk. He was very drunk. Okay, very drunk. Yeah. Really drunk. So then I get home, and it occurs to me that I, the exact thing, Jess, that you were just talking about, I don't know. Now I realize, oh, shit, I don't know where my car is to even go look for it. Uh, it's in a cornfield. All right, we know where to start. <laughs> in a cornfield. <laughs> oh, no. Unfortunately, outside of Tampico, Illinois, in a cornfield doesn't exactly limit it. You know what I mean? Right. That could be anywhere. So what I decide is... The Within res- walking distance of the party, though. Fair like, enough, fair yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. But still, right? that's a that's a wide but it's bird. a pretty yeah. wide... Yeah, I wasn't sure really where it was. So I decided that the smart thing to do would be to at least go find where it is so that tomorrow when I come back to get it, I'll know where, where to oh, come Oh, yeah, let's, it. let's go wander out now while you're drunk. So I get into yeah. my uh, parents' car... And no. I and I drive back over there, but I drive around for a while, but I can't find my car. So then I'm like, "Fuck it, I'll just go home and we'll worry about it tomorrow." So then on the way home in my parents' car, I passed out while I was driving, <gasps> and I went into a, a ditch. <laughs> no. And this time it was a deep ditch. Yeah. And <laughs> no. I hit a I hit a culvert, and it launched we me into the air. We don't call it a culvert. Well, that's what they're called. We just culvert. call that the other side of the ditch. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, 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 the culvert is uh, uh, like a, a driveway from the road to the field with uh, drainage through okay. it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so I'm in the ditch that's like a bowl. Bo- I'm in okay. the ditch like a bowling ball in the gutter. Right. And then I hit this culvert, and it s- launches me into the air. Yeah. I. Uh, this is probably my parents calling, telling me not to tell this story. I hit this culvert, and it launches me into the air, and then I come down nose first and completely total uh, destroy so the So you car. just you totaled two cars one night? I had to leave uh, that car <laughs> in the <laughs> ditch, <laughs> and I wandered to the nearest farmhouse where I uh, knocked on the door at like four in the morning, b- bloodied, and I was explaining to them, you know, I, ple- I needed to use, this was before everyone had cell phones and stuff. And uh, then they they let me in and let me use their phone. And then I had to call my dad and tell him that I needed, I, I wrecked a ca- the car. <laughs> Two cars. And he was going to have to come get me. But he was going to have to go over to grandma's house. And get, <laughs> and get a car to do it. Because you have no cars left. I've wrecked them all. Wow. Thank goodness uh, therapeutic boarding schools weren't in fashion at that time because you would have been shipped away <laughs> nowadays. Like, that is some crazy, crazy. shit. You know, in the mm-hmm. Air Force, uh, I wrecked and got my car into a ditch, big like canal, you might as well say there, wow. uh, full of water. And I had a snake with my snake with me around my neck. Wow. And, Wait, uh, no, I'm sorry. You just can't Jesus. throw that out. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you, you buried guys. the lead. <laughs> I was taking my snake with me in the car, so she was with me around my neck, right? Excuse me, what happened snake? to your snake? What? She, she was with me. No, I mean, I, you don't have a snake now. No, no, the, um, she's at a zoo in England. Is that what your parents told you? No, 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 she really is. <laughs> I donated her to the zoo. It's true. Mm-hmm. Is it true, really? Yeah, I'm serious. Okay. And I had her, and we had to, I had to, like, you know, push my door open. It was really, I had to swim out. With the snake up, around your neck. With the snake around my neck. <laughs> I remember her trying to like, uh, you know, like swim away and I had to grab her and, and put her back around my neck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard of my And nobody, life. nobody would answer the door for me, obviously. Why? I'm soaking wet with a snake around my neck. <laughs> Why would anybody want to open the door to me, right? Uh, so finally, this just like truck driver, and I had to just go with it. You know, uh-huh. like, normally I wouldn't just get in the car with a truck driver, but I had to, to otherwise. Well, you're pretty safe with that snake around yes. your neck. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I bet that truck driver was like, "It's gonna be interesting," but with an yeah. English accent. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be right interesting. Oh, yeah. right now. <laughs> wow. So, did how much trouble did you get into? I uh, I I didn't get into a serious amount of trouble. I, I mean, my parents were like, just like, whatever, you're an idiot. 
and really? uh, yeah, um, my parents are, are pretty chill. Uh, That's and really the police, chill. the the uh, so we called the police, <laughs> and uh, the local cop came to my house in the morning, <laughs> and uh, I had to go. I actually went in. You called them that mm-hmm. morning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, it's I, a little town. They're going to hear about they're gonna it. They're going to hear no, about it. Because yeah. whatever, my, I left mine in the car. They came to me. You well, know what the, I mean? They're going to find you. before. I don't know that they had found. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was trying to get, as they say, out ahead of the story. <laughs> Doing some, uh, uh, some public relations work. Right. So I talked to them, and uh, I, it, it was la- it, it, enough time had passed that I didn't appear to be really drunk right it was now it the sun was now up i mean it was now the seven dead o- kennedy move seven <laughs> o- yeah yeah a chap acquitted my way out of that so they didn't give me a dui <laughs> jessica doesn't know what we're talking about sorry you guys we're old <laughs> um i didn't get a dui i did however get a ticket for illegal lane usage because the cop figured that since i was was driving on the right-hand side of the road, and I crashed in the ditch on the left-hand side of the road, he said at some point I must have crossed over the other lane you must illegally. Have. <laughs> wow. So I got a ticket, and then my parents... They don't know if you had your blinker on. True. Was it a double I, line? I chose not to fight it. <laughs> yeah, I bet. And, uh, and uh, then, uh, so after that was all over with, then uh, I we had to go... Uh, we had to get my parents' car out of the ditch and tow it back into town, and then we had to drive over to the other town and, and locate my car and then get it towed back. So your parents weren't angry or yelling? They were angry, but I, they're, our relationship is such that they're not, they're not like, they're not, what are they going to do? I'm 19. You know, like right. I was living on my you, own. I, I have a 19-year-old, and I bet they were like, he's almost out. He's almost out. Yeah. He's almost out. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know. I mean, yeah, they were not happy about it, uh-huh. but they're also not. You know, they're just very chill intellectuals. You know what I mean? Like are they're, they they're the type like, that are like, "Look, you're, Brett, you're we're not dumb mad. Idiot. Yeah, we're just really disappointed." We were past that, oh. I, but it was. Yeah, they were. It, it was not a. It wasn't fun around my house for the next few weeks. But right. they. But they're like my like I, I grew up. My parents never laid a hand on me, or you know what I mean. That's like, what's wrong about, with you. Yeah, it might be. <laughs> so what Fair is it enough. that your parents do for a living? Uh, they're both retired now. My my uh, my mother was a nurse, and my uh, dad uh, was a construction uh, laborer. Oh wow! Hey. Mm-hmm. A really even-tempered construction worker, huh? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, that's a first strong story. I'm going to say that's a that's a really good one. I yeah. I man, if if my kid did that, <laughs> oh, it would be windmills. I'd be like. What the fuck? <laughs> I'd be literally like that. That's Lionel, amazing. are you going to say, what do you think about this story? Man, I think he don't know how to drive. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 nah, but I think you're right. Wow. All right, well, let's move it along. Now you tell your first story. My first story. Uh, as I don't know if y'all told, I'm from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, born and raised. Uh, On the playground. I was about to say. You <laughs> right, right, right. right. <laughs> first thing, I, I, don't, I don't know Will Smith, but I do know Kevin Hart. And before Kevin Hart was like big time, you know, big time. Like, you know, I used to sit down. I wasn't doing comedy at the time, but I went out to the Laugh House. And, uh, you know, I just I was watching like when he first started out. And, you know, I never really wanted to do comedy. I just, I just, just beat it. I was that guy. I used to heckle people. So I was. I did too. Yeah, I was. No, I did. (laughs) She's proud of that. No, I'm not proud. (laughs) It took me a long time to admit it, but I at least wasn't. He's a heckler. I wasn't the type that was like, fuck you, you suck, or whatever. I, I was, wasn't that type either. No, I was like just thinking, I'm adding to it. We're having fun. Mm-hmm. Right, right. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. no, really? And I did. You were that person? <laughs> right, yeah. right. And I used, to, I used to heckle a lot of folks, man. And, you know, I used to heckle Kevin, too, because he wasn't that damn funny at the time. And we, we just got cool. We started hanging out. We was playing basketball and all that stuff. Then he found out I was doing comedy, and he said he was going to support me and everything. And How old is he when you first started hanging out? We was probably, like, we was like, uh... 18, All right. 18, 19. And, uh, you know, we played ball together. We was in church leagues. You know, I was always taller than him, as y'all can see, you know. And in fairness, everyone's taller. Yeah. Than <laughs> <everyone>. <laughs> <laughs> right. 
It's right, true. right, right, right. So, but you know, once he did like soul playing, he kind of took off. You know, right. then I was right. like, oh wow, I can do this. So I got into comedy, and I was like, man, I got to get out the hood too. So I started doing it, and I met him. He's like, yo, come on, come on to California. I'm a, you know, look out for you, you know, give you some advice, man. And I, how old were you when you moved out here? I was, I moved out here. It was 2008. And how old? Can I ask how old you were? Uh, do the math. <laughs> I can't. There's no reference to, point. To, <laughs> to, 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 to 2008, I was uh 28. 28. Yeah. <laughs> and you had already had all your kids by then. Yeah, I had my kids all okay. by. Yeah. You I, have kids? I, yeah. Well, I, that's had, I, I, I had four kids before I was 21. Oh my God! So this story includes four kids. <laughs> right, it's serious. Holy right. cow! Yeah, yeah I, I, I had. <laughs> oh my I, God! I, 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 I had. Yeah. So back to Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> that's, another, that's another story. Oh, no, because I have two that's, teenagers that's, now, so I'm that's, like, that's you had four story. kids, <laughs> Jesus. Right, right. So I get out here, and you know, obviously Kevin doing good. You know, I see him at the improv, and you know, say he's gonna get with me, and you know, I gave him my number, and you know, he just he never called, and I kill kind of feel some type of way because I I feel like I'm a part of the Plastic Cup Boys too because before Kevin was who he was, you know, I I hung around him, you know, so I figured that you know. It, it would be right just to give me throw a little bone, you know. I could be an extra in something, you know. Right. So I see him at the Laugh Factory again. I was like, Kev, what's up? And he looked at me like, hey, you want to take a picture? I'm like, man, I know you. Why I want to take a picture? And he just jumped in a Ferrari and just took off. So. Really? Because I met Kevin once here. or He's been here twice. We right. ran into each other. The second time mm. he actually introduced himself, he was very nice. Right. He's very kind and like, hey, I get my way. I'm Kevin. Like, yeah, he, so that's your story. That's fast. Yeah, he, he's nice. He's nice. But when it's time to get out of here, he got out of there. So, so, but that's your story. That's my story. That's right your there. story. Yeah, huh. so. Well, it does check out because I know uh, my ex husband is Kevin's manager. Okay. Uh, and we, <laughs> we've been. <laughs> I hear that. He's just like, oh, oh, oh uh, ex husband. It doesn't help me. <laughs> right, right. Uh, but uh, I remember when he first brought Kevin around, Kevin was really young. He, yeah. like, got fame or. or uh, he worked what very hard. we think is fame, even on a, a smaller level, like uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So you guys met around that time, like 19. He's probably 18, yeah, 19, 18, right? 18, 19, paper soldiers and all that stuff, you know. It was cool. So, you know, hmm. maybe one day you might look out. But, you know. Well, I have many questions. and uh, uh, You're not going to ask well, them? Well, I just feel, <laughs> no, I mean, for later on, maybe we should okay. keep it moving. But I just, I can't see Kevin uh, doing that. Okay. I can't see he Kevin did it. doing that. He did it. Because, he did it. because later, I, like uh, for the past three years, I've been uh, uh, one of the photographers at the Montreal Comedy Festival. Mm -hmm. And so Kevin has been there for the past three years. Right. And my ex-husband and I have been divorced for 10 years. There's no, you know what I mean? There's no reason for anyone to come and talk to me. And, and, and he was very friendly to me. So, uh, you know, and I'm, you know. Right. But you're taking pictures? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. yeah, of course, he's nice to the person taking we, pictures. He, he has doesn't to. want his fucking picture taken. He's like, right. Ugh, this again. Right. You know what I mean? But no, that's the yeah. thing. In Montreal, he, but that's a good point. He invited <laughs> a lot of other comedians to come, and that's uh -huh. why I was disappointed. I'm like, I'm from Philadelphia. You are getting all these other comedians to come to Montreal, and I'm from Philly. And, and he's we, got that whole network now. Right, he could have. He, right, he could have done played, something. We played basketball together. We was on a damn swim team. You were on a swim team? Well, <laughs> now that's a lie. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up. Oh, no, no, wait, first, first, first of all, first of all, oh first of all, God, that's Jessica. a stereotype. Black Jesus folks can't Christ. swim. Jesus. That's a stereotype. Well, I didn't last long. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, I, 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 I quit can't the swim, first week. So. I lie. Yeah. I quit the first yeah. week. Oh, but, you know, so. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Jessica. Well, Jesus. no, no, it's not even that. I would say because you were saying like you were from the hood, all that. He, usually, anytime that anybody is, uh, you know, poor, me included, th we didn't have a swim team. Kevin, there was Ke no way. Kevin can swim. He can <laughs> swim better than he playing <laughs> no. basketball. No, no, no. I, know. <laughs> I, I swear to God. I believe you, but Kevin, I'm just like, I can't believe Kevin the podcast has all of a sudden stumbled into <laughs> this, this <laughs> fucking rabbit hole. I, I'll be honest, oh Kevin God. can swim. <laughs> yes, okay. That's better the name than of the episode, basketball. Kevin can swim. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin can oh, swim. But now, is it better as a swimmer if you're if you're taller or shorter? Uh, hello. Taller. Because yeah, because you get more you, mm -hmm. you get more uh, taller. He's good. Okay. Reach. Okay. Was I was. See, I'd like to see Kevin as a little speedo. Yeah, uh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> That's a whole different podcast. <laughs> wow! Wow! 
how did you get four kids by the time? I mean, I know how, but <laughs> <laughs> we back Damn. there. Four kids by twenty-one. Uh, they, be, because it wasn't porn on all porn, of them. On all the of them are blessed. It, 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 sure. it was porn on phones. Then I, I don't think I'll have kids. <laughs> oh really? Yeah. yeah. Was, really? They, they, yeah. They started too late, man. I wish, you know, Apple was popping in the nineties. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. Yeah, uh, you know, I had my first son when I was 14. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I was the youngest ever paying child support. Yeah, yeah. I was paying child support. Oh I lied. Just sit. Brett's going to have an anxiety I, I was, attack was, right now. <laughs> I was paying child support at 17, and my dad still was paying child support for me. <laughs> oh, so, so you just wow. took that child yeah, I couldn't pay his child support <laughs> so I paid my child support it was sad man wow. and I, I am I'm 39 you know and I have two grandkids Oh, I, I was a fuck. pop. I was a pop up at thirty five. Right. Well, maybe that's why Kevin don't ask you to come do shit because you, <laughs> you got I'm fucking... get pregnant. That's why he should ask me because I gotta take care of these kids. That, well, they, maybe he's should. like that motherfucker needs to stay at home and take care of his kids, <laughs> drive them to school, and go to the grocery store. I need money he don't have to do time that. to come to Montreal and have Man. fun. <laughs> wow. So. Wow. Two very good stories. Do you have any questions? And uh, I got a Jehovah Witness pregnant. You got a Jehovah. She knocked on the, the door. Wrong door that day. That was the, the wrong door. She knocked on. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh no. <laughs> I practice safe sex now. Well, yeah. <laughs> she spread the good word. <laughs> so how many? How many? Uh, uh, God, I hate. She the said, "Oh my God, God I said, ladies, <laughs> baby mamas." Are, I hate the term baby mamas. I have four. They're all, so e a different one for each child. Four. Yeah, and do, are they uh, know each other and hang out yeah, together? Yeah, oh, yeah. good, I had wonderful. Them all together as kids. We yeah. all we all was kids. Yeah. Together. Wow. Yeah, so wow. We went to the arcade. I like the arcade, so. Yeah. Uh huh. They like McDonald's. <laughs> <all. laughs> <laughs> it was true, man. You like Street Fighter? I like Street Fighter. It was crazy. <laughs> Stop, Dad. <laughs> It was, it okay. was real. You gotta learn right. these combos, man. You gotta, <laughs> right, you gotta learn these combos. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. I want super size. You got super size. Yeah. That's a great story to kick it off. Two really strong stories. Uh, so let's move on to uh, Brett's second story. <laughs> All right. This story is um, blue. Can we be blue? Yeah, you can be blue. All right. Okay. I'll be delicate. I don't know. We've never been live, so. <laughs> Huh. Yeah, we'll this might out. be your last, your right. first and last <laughs> Facebook Live episode. We might go to I'll jail. be delicate, and uh, you people will be able to uh, deduce um, what's happening. Uh, I I also have kids. You, you do, right? I have two children. You do? I didn't know that. Yes, they are uh, grown. See, uh -huh. I, I didn't move out here until they were already out of high school. That's why I only moved out here four years ago after 20 oh. years of comedy. I stayed, because I'm divorced uh -huh. from their mother. Uh-huh. And uh, they lived with them, or lived with her, and so I was like a single dad, you know, touring comic. But wow. I didn't, I didn't move because if I, you know, I would never see them ever. So I waited till they were grown, and then I moved out here. So I, and I've been divorced for almost twenty years. But uh, on this is before uh, we had any kids. Uh, my wife and I on our third wedding anniversary. We went out and we had uh, a, a nice, you know, we did the whole romantic thing. We went to uh, uh, this place uh, in, in Peoria called Mangiano's, which is like this real ritzy <coughs> Italian uh, place. And then we went out and we went dancing and, and we were having fun and uh, we were drinking. And my wife doesn't, uh, my ex-wife didn't really drink so much. Uh -huh. So she was kind of a lightweight, but she was having a good time. And uh, uh, so she got pretty drunk. And then she, we, got, we got a hotel room. We were just going to stay in like the suite, you know, and all this stuff. She's like, so she was getting, um, you know, she was in the mood, right? So she's like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go back to the hotel room right now. I'm like, perfect. So we go back to the hotel room. Uh, things are, are starting to get hot and heavy. <coughs> And um, this is where I have to start to get r extremely delicate. Oh, God. Um, I thought, since it's a special occasion, <laughs> this would be <laughs> the perfect opportunity for anal? to try something that we had never tried before. <laughs> Maybe she would be into it, right? <coughs> yes, that. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so everything's <laughs> going great. Straightforward. Right, here's the thing: <laughs> everything's blue. everything's going great. 
Everyone just leaned in, I, by the way. I know, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, the numbers just went up on the, the listenership. Yeah, so from one to two. So, <laughs> so, so, so uh, uh, we're in the, uh, the, the position for that to happen, right? Okay. And she's, she has acknowledged that you may, we, we, that you uh, may do see, that. Well, this is, about, <laughs> this is all a part of the story. Is this why you got divorced? <laughs> Don't jump ahead. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so I'm like, all right. Well, this is this is my chance. So I like get everything working. I start to like probe in that area. Probe. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm meeting. Ah. I'm meeting no resistance. Oh what are you probing with? The thing that <laughs> you penis. would probe with, yeah. You can say penis. Yeah, uh, all right, my <laughs> penis. So, uh, <laughs> so, so, I'm, so there's no, there's no resistance coming from from my wife, right? She is like, yeah, that you know, like all all signs are like, yeah, yeah. After a big she's meal, like, yeah, the let's perfect <laughs> time to do it. Let's do she's, it. She is like, you know, just making herself available. And I'm like, uh-huh. this is unbelievable. So so I do it. I put uh-huh. it in. And uh-huh. then I'm like, oh, my God, it is happening. This is amazing. So being the uh, uh, romantic stud that I am, it took me probably about 40 seconds to be like, oh, I'm overwhelmed. And then <laughs> I climaxed in her. Uh-huh. And then. <laughs> climax. <is> that <laughs> That's how white people say it, Lionel. Right that was like lip balm or he put a baby in her butt. Oh, oh my god! Butt baby. <laughs> well, here's where the story gets interesting. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. Butt baby's pretty interesting. Right. So, uh, so after I after I pull out, and then we're laying there, and I'm like, I'm. I said to her, I said, "Man, that was great. I can't believe, you know, you." didn't resist you let me do that whatever she's like what are you talking about and i'm like you know you just let me put it you in your butt you were in the butt and she's like what are you talking about and i'm like huh <laughs> i wasn't i wasn't in her butt i was in her vagina yeah. <laughs> and you made a baby nine months yeah. later uh, oh, <laughs> <shit>. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of was Yay! a butt baby. A baby, <laughs> <laughs> a baby appeared. Uh, almost butt baby. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> his name is Zach, and he lives in Chicago. Aww. 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 What nice little now baby Zach. Now he knows on the night he was conceived. Uh-huh. He already knows that story. Oh, he already knows yeah. that story? How old you, was he when you told him that story? Oh, it was just a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. And what was his reaction? He's 25 now, I know, so he I can know, handle. but still, that's still um, a creepy thing to know yeah, about he parents. Th- yeah, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I don't know. He thought it was funny. Oh, he thought it was funny? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Only reason you ain't here because I thought I was going in the ball. Uh-huh. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 I must have been uh, over a... Uh, that's not so... Um, my lucky. dad used to tell me... Wow. I was born in 1967. My dad would tell me... In the seventies, jokingly, as like y- y- when he would yell at me that the only reason I was around was to keep him out of Vietnam, and that war was over. Mm. <laughs> so I don't think that you know my story is any right. worse. Right, I know parents tell you too much information. Like Sometimes. my mom said, the dye friend slept in a motel in Utah when my parents were going <laughs> across the country. And it's like wow, and she also told me my dad had a big penis. Have you ever used a diaphragm? <laughs> no. Yeah, she told me my my dad had a big penis, and then oh my you know God. how hard it is to accept your father as an authority figure when he's hung like quick draw McGraw. <laughs> I'm just saying. My, <laughs> my dad was crazy. My dad. I remember one time I was playing in, in a house, and I wanted to leave outside. He wanted me to do my homework, and I wanted to go outside. And he's like, I said, I'm gonna go outside with my friends. And he was drunk. He's like, your friends. And he just grabs his penis. Like this is your friend right here. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, what? dad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't know about that story. <laughs> that's, that's what I said. What? I, I said I'm gonna do this homework, guys. <laughs> wow. wow! I'm going swimming. All right. <laughs> so I. So how is it that you thought? I mean, I could. You must have been pretty drunk. Pretty drunk. <clears throat> right. I don't know. Right. It's dark. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Did in so everything? Did you? Had, so it was literally just the thought. 
Yeah. That you were in the butt. I was that like, got this you is to... amazing. Placebo affected it. Yeah, like, to go. Whatever, like, whatever. In losing. 40 seconds. I don't know how long it was. It wasn't like. It, it was, was quick. It wasn't a sting like, you know, uh, <laughs> performance. The musician. And she probably wondered why you, you were going in so gentle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. She's like, you're just a, you're an idiot. Yeah. <laughs> Also, two very good stories from Brett. We have his first story about uh, being drunk in the middle of nowhere, Illinois, and uh, <coughs> wrecking his car after a party and then uh, being taken home. And, 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 and truly, my car was really my parents' car also. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it was and really, then, I didn't know. Yeah, right. it was both of their cars, but it right. was the car I drove around. And then going back, someone having taken you back home and then deciding, oh, I need to go find my car. So you take your dad's car and you also wreck your dad's car. Mm -hmm. And then your second story is you got really drunk with your uh, ex-wife and thought you were having anal, but you were just having... A baby. A baby. <laughs> 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 Two very good stories. I approve of those stories. All right, what's your second story? All right, this story. Oh, we getting hot. Let's get hot. All right. Um, <laughs> I was 19 years old. Me and this girl, we both was 19, and we had this thing where uh, it was like in the 90s. And we had this thing where I'd go over our house at 12 o'clock at night because her mother, she will she worked graveyard shift. Oh. And her mother worked for uh, <clears throat> uh, the police the police station. Disp she was a dispatcher. Taking all the calls in, and one day I was so excited. Rescue nine one one. What's your emergency? Uh, I'm trying to get your daughter. I was so. That's my emergency. <laughs> right. So I uh, I was so excited to get there, and I and I got up there probably like eleven forty five, and this is the time when there's no cell phones, and we using pay phones. So I called my pay phone, called the house, and my mom picked up the phone. And I hung the phone up real fast. And I seen her mom leave. And I was like, all right, let me call again. I called again. Then she answered the phone. She said, oh, yeah, she left. Come on to the house. So I get there. And then the routine was I come in. The house is dark. And we walk upstairs. And I go to the bathroom, my shower. And we go into her front room. I don't know why I did this strange stuff. But I used to take all my clothes off and just put in her brother room. And, and her brother was probably like, uh, 10 years old or something like that. I'll just take my clothes off in her room, give it to her, and she put it in her brother room because I thought somebody come in, I can hide in the closet and nobody see my clothes or something. Anyway, so we start make, <laughs> we start making out, and as we're making out, the house should always be pitch dark. And all of a sudden, we see a light switch. A, we see a light. The hallway light goes on. Come on, and we see the... Uh, the light coming from the crack of her door. Uh -huh. And we're like, oh, she's like, oh. And she's like, grab my mouth so I won't see anything. And all you heard was her mom, can I say it? Her mom was like, Ronnie, open this door, open this door. And all of a sudden, all you see her mom, her mom kicked the door open, bow, and turned the light on, and the mom had a machete. <laughs> this this knife was so long. Now I'm laying laying on the bed. I have no clothes on. I'm naked. We both naked. And she's like, Ronnie, come here, Ronnie, come here, come here. And Ronnie's like, No, you're gonna stab me. You're gonna stab me. Come here, Ronnie. And as Ronnie gets up to walk to her, that was a girl's name. Her, yes. Yeah, and, yeah. So her yeah. first instinct was to to was she trying to get Ronnie away from you as protection no, to protect her, no, or she's she just, pissed at she's Ronnie? She's pissed at Ronnie. Right. And she said, come here, Ronnie. And Ronnie like, no, you're going to stab me. And Ronnie gets up and walks to her. And she, I was looking like, oh, my God. She had a Rambo knife. This knife was long. And she went like this, like she's about to stab her, but she hit her with her left hand. But when she hit Ronnie with the left hand, Mommy closed her finger right, and her finger got cut on Ronnie's teeth. And Mom went from, ah, ah, shit, fuck. And I was on the bed like, oh, then Ronnie fell back to the bed. And she's like, what are you doing in my house? What are you doing? Where's your clothes at? I was like, ma'am, if I didn't know I was supposed to be in your house, I would not be in your house. I, my mom ain't raised nobody like this. I'm not like that. <laughs> <laughs> And I, 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 was, I, was I had clothes on when I came in here. I don't know what happened to him. I'm on the church swim team. <laughs> uh, right, right. So I look at Ronnie and I said, Ronnie, why you got me in your mother's house? And you know I wasn't supposed to be in your mother's house. Ronnie, Ronnie, Turn it back on Ronnie, her. Ronnie looked at me and said, You know you weren't supposed to be here. <laughs> And the mom's like, where your clothes at? I was like, they're in a room right there. Then she called her boyfriend. And he was small, but he was like strong. So he was, was he downstairs? 
Kevin Hart. Right. <laughs> right, 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 right. Her boyfriend was strong. I don't know where he came from. I just was trying to get out of there. Uh-huh. And he's like, where your clothes at, dog? Get your clothes, man. And I got my clothes on. And I I don't think I, I, I ever, I never seen Ronnie ever again. I never seen it. And I just took off. That's you don't know story. if she's dead or alive. I don't know. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm alive now. I'm talking to but you. But she didn't have one of your babies, right? No, no. Okay, no, no. okay. That you're aware of. You don't know yeah, you haven't what, seen her. No, I didn't. I didn't get a chance. Oh, okay. Uh, right. We didn't get a chance to do anything. Wow. Yeah. But you wow. said this was a routine. Yeah, but you know, it was later, later down the line. Now, did her mother know you? Know you or know she who you were? Nothing. Or no. Nothing. She didn't. She had never right met you, you before. Nothing. No, nothing. Not, not in the hood. We don't meet moms in the hood. Uh-huh. <laughs> We just meet, meet the daughters, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you, know, you really know how to shut Felicia up. Right. No, no, I, no. I was thinking about it. No, because maybe you know she knew uh, you know who you were by word of mouth. N- no, she. I think what happened. I think Ronnie was used to doing that. Yeah, I wasn't the only guy she probably. And she knew with. that that phone call, the hang up, meant or something was up because uh, she's about to leave, yeah, and that hang up. Point. Who was that about? That was too early. Uh-huh. She knew that. You know, it's that parent intuition of like, something's going on here. Nobody's calling it 11.45 and then hanging up. Somebody knows I'm leaving. And you said she had like a a machete. And you said you you called it a rainbow knife. Rainbow. Rainbow knife. Yeah, it's a rainbow knife. (laughs) A rainbow knife. You know, for the gays. (laughs) (laughs) No, because I thought maybe it was like (laughs) curved. (laughs) Curved. And I thought, that's a really interesting name. I like that. A A rainbow rainbow knife. Some folks call it a sling blade. I call it a rainbow <laughs> knife. <laughs> a rainbow. Wow. Now, also, now, whose fist went into the teeth? What happened with that now? Uh, when when Ronnie's mom came in, she called her to get up. And as she walked over to her, she went like she was going to stab her, but she hit her. She was going to stab her? But she hit yeah. her with the other hand. With the other hand. And she hit her tooth. Hit Ronnie's tooth, yeah. Okay, because I have done that. I got in a fight with a girl, and I punched her, oh, wow. and, uh, and my whole knuckle busted open because I hit her tooth. Shit. So that yes. does happen. Yeah. Wow. That was my crazy moment. We won't get into that one. Oh, oh wow. Wow, let's get into that. You really hit another girl like oh, that? So I was like seeing this guy, having <laughs> sex with this guy hands. in the Air Force. Uh, his name's Lamont. Lamont Howard, haven't heard from you in a while. <laughs> 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 what up, Howard? <laughs> But I got really super jealous because he brought home these two chicks from the from the bar. Uh-huh. Uh huh. You were living with them? No, no, no. We were in the uh, dorms. Okay. In the Air Force in England. Okay. And uh, so I knew he snake. was coming home with them. So I beat him to the dorm room uh-huh. dorms, and I broke into his room, going through the <gasps> window. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> and I found all her stuff in there. Uh huh. So like I threw everything off the, off the balcony uh-huh. like a dummy. I was so stupid. I threw everything off and, and broke her phone, all that stuff. And then, then she showed up and then... Um, Were you f- having sex with him? Yeah. Oh, okay. And then her friend is the one that like dashed toward me, so she was coming at me. So I just swung and punched her right as she was running at me plus so we really got i got the tooth big time and then we were we were in a fight and a tussle forever and it was it actually got tiresome (laughs) 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 wow okay i mean luckily they that she didn't press charges and i really appreciate that did he just watch he was just watching i was so surprised by the the terminology of it it was just tiresome (laughs) (laughs) Well, you lug a snake around all day. That'll take it out of you. you Yeah, so was your snake in your dorm room? Um, I did have a snake, but the first snake I had in my dorm room, I accidentally killed. I got him too hot. Mm. And then you were (laughs) like, you know what? I've killed this creature of God. (laughs) Get another one. Well, it was actually a girl that was moving out. Uh She she needed uh, somebody to take her, Uh so I took her in after she left. What what kind of snake was it? A red-tailed boa. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. Sure. Is it uh, indigenous? It's not indigenous <laughs> to England, right? They're from like South Africa or are. South America, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're yeah, they're yeah. yeah. They're not from England. Right. But you yeah, like you can get anything anywhere. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's when I started breeding rats. <laughs> we can't get it off. Oh my Shut god. Up. I'm not started breeding house. rats. <laughs> I'm not coming <laughs> over <laughs> at all. And thank goodness. And thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> 
because the rat population has been down for too long. Yeah. We need people stop. who are out there doing the work doing and the getting Lord's those work. numbers back up where we uh, need them to be. Uh, thank you. We wow. can't go down all my rabbit holes. I feel like you're redneck <laughs> Joey Diaz. You think there's one story and then there's yeah. 17. We're like, what the yeah. hell? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Wow. <laughs> right. Well, wow, two very good stories, and yeah, uh, uh, so let's go back to Brett. And uh, do you have any questions? You can ask any questions, uh, Andrew. Do you have any questions oh. for Brett on any of his stories? <coughs> the uh, whenever you uh, took your parents' car to go back, you said you landed on the nose. Mm-hmm. Did you say what kind of car it was? I didn't. It was a, uh, a Chevrolet Chevette. Remember the Chevette? Oh, a little one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No. Yeah, yeah, it was like it to. was whatever the smallest like hatchback car and was. And what was yeah. the car that you were driving that you wrecked? It was the a uh, a Nissan, like a like an Ultima or something. Like I can't they Sentra had something back like that. Then? No, I don't remember. It was a Nissan something. It wasn't like super nice. Right. I think it was, it was a, a Sentra, Nissan? maybe. When did Nissans That's come what I'm in thinking. Too. Yeah. They had little Nissan. I remember my brother had an old. Well, like, Nissan's been around Nissan. forever. But. but I well, think they were Brett's Dotsons. older than you, right? They were Nissans in, by Dotsons, the 90s. I know Dotsons. Yeah, but oh, you were no. you were 21. Oh, no, no, you were 19. Been, this would have yeah, this oh, happened in 1987. Yeah, right, Was Jessica? it 87? Yeah. Cuz oh. I was 19 years old. Well, he's younger than I thought. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 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 you know. You don't look. She's good at ages from all that rat breeding. Mm-hmm. She can look at a fellow. Well, I, I said mm-hmm. earlier I was born in 1967, so right. if you're paying That's attention. True. Right. Yeah. This isn't a math podcast. <laughs> I, uh, I can't imagine in the middle of Illinois in that time that someone would have a Nissan Ultima. No, yeah, he I, doesn't I, know that it, it was an Ultima. It might not have been an Ultima. It was a Nissan, though. It was a, also just a little yeah. car, like a little hatchback. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so they had them. two hatchbacks. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Ultima was in the 90s, right? All right. Yeah, two hatchbacks does seem odd. Kind of yeah, that for, seems weird, too. Yeah, in yeah. Illinois, farm town. Like, yeah. you don't have anything. Well, we I lived think... in the town. We didn't live on a farm. We lived in the I know, town but I, I, proper. Uh, so we didn't have, like, pickup. We didn't need a pickup truck or anything. You know, but my family lives in Kansas. And even if you don't live on a farm, a lot of people have uh, big uh, trucks because of the weather. Mm-hmm. Right, or at least that. a van. Yeah. Van, <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> van. Because a van, van, vans are good. They're just like a truck; they can tow stuff. Vans are terrible in the snow. You wouldn't want a van. Plus the wind, yeah. it's terrible. bad. Vans are well, bad. A hatchback is like a big sail in the snow. It's not hmm. bad. You get front wheel drive cars uh, actually do pretty well uh, in the in the snow. Mm, actually, bad. because because all of the weight on the on the front front wheel drive, all of the weight of the engine is holding the wheels down on the ground uh-huh. where the power is going to. If you have a, <laughs> a two-wheel drive car with rear-wheel drive, those are the cars that are always fishtailing around because there's no right. weight back there. You know what I find interesting when a man tells me something? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully <laughs> everything. <laughs> As I think about, I have this friend named Dem- <laughs> David Bearwald, and he always tells me stuff. Uh, he's much like Andrew in that way. And... Uh, and but then but then he always says to me, if you don't know the information and I'm giving you the information, is it still mansplaining? No. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> of course, I'm right. going to say that, but yeah. no. No, uh, no, I don't think it's so. It's only mansplaining if you it's, obviously already know the condescend. information. Yeah, I right. was at I was at Runyon Canyon. Uh, this was a couple years ago. That's at, a canyon. Uh, uh, up at the very top of the hill, I was I, I used to hike <laughs> up there all the time. And as I was going up there, there was a couple who were like jogging, uh-huh. and the one guy was like super, like you know, in his like workout outfit, and he had this, some, this girl with him, and it was the most perfect explanation of mansplaining ever. As they're going up the hill at the very top of Runyon, he is explaining to her how to step up the steps as she's <laughs> jogging, <laughs> and I'm like, dude, she's yeah. been walking. She's been for- walking for a while. <laughs> she knows how to do this. And just the look on her face was like, ugh. She's never come I across know. steps in her life. Oh, my God. I was just mm. telling Andrew earlier that my teenage son <coughs> is, was mansplaining to me how to make hash browns. <laughs> I 
I was like, really, dude? <laughs> wow. Well, um, so those were two really good stories. And uh, so let's decide what do you think is true? The first story where he not only <laughs> wrecked his own car, but his parents' car, well, which were both his parents' car, coming home from a party all drunk. And, uh, 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 and then his second story is a story about the butt baby. That he was on his third anniversary and he thought he was having anal with his wife, but it turns out that he was just super drunk and it was just sex from the back way. Was your was your second child planned? Yes. So this is the story about your, how your first child mm-hmm. was conceived. Okay. Yep. Okay. And and what anniversary was it again? Third. Third anniversary. Nineteen ninety three. Okay. August eleventh. I'm sure that's real. Yeah, I mean, um, what do you? I don't know. I think uh, I I just love the idea of the butt baby. <laughs> I know I want butt baby to be real. <laughs> I want butt baby to be real. That's fantastic. If you just believe hard enough, uh, butt baby will come to life and be real. I, I, I I'm allowed to answer. Yes, of course. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think I think butt baby is <laughs> is. Is real, but the car is not. You do. So you do think Butt Baby is real. Yeah. I, uh, I second that. And the only reason I say that is because for, like, I can, from being a, like, young, I can remember every vehicle my parents have had. And you kind of stumble through that. That's. Yeah. And I'm stuck on the Nissan, Nissan yeah. in the middle of Illinois. And your dad being a construction guy, because my dad was a construction guy. He would need a truck if he was a yes, construction yes, worker. Yes, yes, oh. yes, yes, oh. yes, yes. My dad Let was a Let me just carpenter. tell you this. My father ran a saw at Walnut Custom Homes for 20 years. Now, they, are, they make prefabricated homes, which means these are the homes where they build the walls of the homes on, in, a, in a factory. And then they load them up onto a uh, onto a f- like a flatbed trailer. You'll see those all over. Was the- your was your dad? <laughs> a- so my dad worked at my dad worked construction, but he didn't work on construction sites. He worked okay, in this okay. factory ev- every day. Yeah. For- was he a handyman around the house? Sure. Well, yeah. Okay. A good question. B. My <laughs> brother <laughs> works at a factory. Uh, he doesn't do construction, but he does air conditioning in a little town in Kansas. And he still has two trucks. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. So People where I'm from, they that, work yeah. at the turkey plant, but they drive a truck. Mm-hmm. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> turkey plant. That's another fucking turkey thing. plant. <laughs> Jessica gets a little angry. Tur- turkeys and pickles. That's the what, old that's turkey factory. <laughs> yeah, they work at the pickle plant. I bet you're gonna see a lot more trucks than you are cars. <laughs> but 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 no, wait 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 wait. Uh, uh, but but you will see s- there are some people who drive to the pickle plant in a car. Oh, absolutely. There yeah, but those it. are those are the for, women. For, for the women. Yeah, yeah. I can't. Yeah. Plant. That's He's, where they make pickles. Pickle plant. Right. He's just saying using that. There's as called an Mad Olive pickles. Oh, right. You were just also, saying that as an example, also, right? Yeah. Also, yeah. my father most of the time walked to work. Because oh. it was, it was right oh, through, it through was, the snow. It was <laughs> downhill both oh, no. ways. It was just, <laughs> It was only about. Uh, it was only about a quarter of a mile from our house through the through the yards. No one has fences in my town. You could walk right yeah, through that's the backyard. Tr- that walk to true. work. We walk yeah, to work most of the time. In, honestly, in middle America, no one walks to work. Yeah, everything's so spread out. Yeah, I'm gonna say uh, yeah, that. So bullshit. so. I'm going to say, I think the first story, although it's hilarious about wrecking two cars, and you look like a kind of guy that would do that, (laughs) but that your parents didn't get all that, that they weren't that, I mean, they were probably pissed, but that they didn't beat the shit out of you, man. That's But then you were 19, but still, two cars. Two cars in one night? Yeah. They'd be pretty pissed. I wonder, do you have any brothers and sisters? I have a sister, a younger sister. I wonder if it was a sister. Oh. Like he took yeah. her story. Could have been a party. Yeah. Mm. Like, guys, I'm going out. Woo-hoo. And then. Well, I'm going to say the first story is a lie, and the second story about Butt Baby is uh, the truth. I agree. Hmm. How about you? He said yeah. the same yeah. thing. We're, we're all in agreement. We're, we're all in the same thing. So, what's you the real story? You are all wrong. No! <laughs> God damn it. You don't think I know what a butt feels like? <laughs> uh, you were young. You, you said you, you were young. young. Yes, you said you was yes. Yeah, I was lying. 
So you did oh. have anal on your third anniversary? No, 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 oh, okay. no, no. None of that even happened. We didn't go out to dinner. Or, I mean, we did something. I don't right. know what it was. Like, we had we uh, <laughs> we planned both of our kids. Um, my ex uh, had uh, endometriosis. So, like, it was difficult for her to get pregnant. So, like, our kids were very much planned. Like, it was, uh, we have to do all of these things. Well, yeah. thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> that your son doesn't have to walk around and being the book baby. <laughs> I know, right? So, how's your so driving now? Your driving skills? I'm great at, I'm, I'm probably the best drunk driver in this <laughs> one. <laughs> That's yeah. not comforting. Um, <laughs> after no. that story. So, that all really happened with that the That all cars. really happened. Can you see how my n- nose is still a little bit? crooked uh-huh. that happened because when i hit the culvert I, I i don't remember going into the ditch obviously because i blacked out but when i hit the culvert i remember there being like a jolt it jolted me awake and when i opened my eyes through the windshield i saw the nighttime sky and in where i live there's it's stars like there's no right. light out anyway so i'm like what and then like this weird like when the car nosed back down i'm like oh there's the ground, and it just went smash into the ground, and then my face hit the steering wheel wow. and just shattered my nose and mm. bloody. Was that from the over. second car or the, the first second car? The second car. The first wow. car I didn't really even do too much damage to. I just put it, it just way lost. down into a field. Right. Right? Yeah. Couldn't find it. Well, at that point, they're probably just glad that you were alive. That was part of it, I yeah. guess. But Did I mean, you have to go to the hospital? I went. Yeah, I did. I did go. Uh, uh, that's. I went into the doctor, and then they sent me to the hospital, and they basically said your nose is broken, which there isn't really much you can do for that. Mm-hmm. Although I did have. They said, "Here's what we're going to do. We're going to straighten your nose. We're going to fix it." Oh. So what they do is they re-break it, right? Wow. So they re-break it, and they packed it with all this stuff, and they said, "Leave this stuff in for a week, and then we'll. It'll be a fine." So a week later, I went back in, and they they were pulling all of this gauze and stuff uh-huh. out of my nose, yeah. which was the most brutally painful experience oh. ever in my life. Because uh, it just, it, there's no, it's really sore still. It's uh-huh. been, nose has been broken twice now. Oh my God. And they're pulling all this stuff out and I'm like, ah, oh, it hurts, it hurts, it hurts. And then when I took the, th- when they're like, okay, it's done, they took the thing off, it looked exactly like it did before they yeah. broke it. I'm like, <laughs> no. Wow. Wow. So, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. I've wrecked a few cars. What a story. That is quite a story. And what a story to make up, you little punk. <laughs> yeah, that I know. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right. So let's go back over to Lion- Lionel and Lionel. <laughs> Lionel. <laughs> Lionel. <laughs> and, uh, Lionel. His story is. How you w- say my name? Uh, La- Lionel. There it is. Okay. We got it. You <laughs> Lionel. I'm not that smart. <laughs> so uh, your first story was about knowing uh, Kevin Hart back in the day when y'all back were kids, like eight, nine, 18, 19 years old, and you were starting comedy, and that uh, he moved on and became a big star, and that when you saw him here at the Laugh Factory, I believe you said that he- Improv. Act- at the improv it was at the improv that he treated yeah. you like a second-rate citizen, like, yeah. like you know, you're just some fanboy or whatever, and- yeah. uh, that hurt Sad. your feelings. Do you think maybe he just didn't recognize you? No, he, he recognized me. I made it, you know, Philly. Right. It's not, it's not, yeah. How, and how long of a period of time was it between when you knew him and then when you saw him at the improv? Uh, you said how long it been since I knew him? No, no. How long of a period of time was it since you uh, were hanging out? Well he, in- was, well, well, he was out here. I think, I'm not sure when he came, but he was out here before me. Mm-hmm. And when I moved out here, you know. I just so happened to bump into him. Yeah, like, but how much time how lasts later, from when you were yeah. 19 to oh, when you how many were years later? Let's ran say, into oh, him at the okay, improv. Okay, uh, probably like seven, eight years. Uh, yeah, seven, eight years ago, yeah. yeah. But you still, you know, Philly is not that big. So, you know, you, when you play basketball with someone, you you know that person. Uh-huh. You know, so. When you swim with somebody. That's it. You know, so. For, you don't well, I, I didn't swim that long, but, you know, we was played church ball together, all that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he knows yeah. exactly who I am. Yeah. But that's a long time, seven to eight years of not seeing someone. And sometimes you, if you're in the middle of, I'm not excusing it, but if you're in the middle of the improv and you're, uh, there's a hundred people around you and uh, I just can't imagine him being rude to you. Well, what I can't imagine is that you would wear a Speedo. No, nah, I, <laughs> I have boxer shorts, so uh, all guys don't got to wear Speedos when you get in the pool. 
No, but when you're racing, when you are on a swim team, he was there a week. <laughs> I was a week. I, I, yeah. The water was. Cold. He didn't get. <laughs> That's why the water was cold. He didn't get the uniform yet. Right. He quit before they hand out, <laughs> handed out the uniforms. She's just right. trying to bust open your lie. That's what she's trying no to do. Lie. Yeah, yeah. And then your second story. Uh, well, oh, I'm sorry. Refresh the. Uh, what uh, was this? Uh, machete. machete. Oh, the machete. The rainbow. Uh, Ra- the rainbow knife. Ra- rainbow. The rainbow knife. <laughs> rainbow. The rainbow knife of meeting a girl wow. and then going to her house at midnight and the mother uh, came Ronnie, back. Ronnie, isn't that Ronnie. a girl from a song? Uh, no, that's actually a girl named from a movie. Players Club. Her name was Ronnie. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you guys think does anybody have any questions andrew i don't have any questions um i just uh i think that kind of based on what y'all said about kevin being nice i think that and i've heard him on interviews and stuff i still think that he, he's a genuine dude i mean but i also get the whole like wanting to leave a club but i want to say that one's the lie and the other one's true because it does sound like a crazy story that could happen to a teenager you know the ray the rainbow knife the, the rainbow knife is the truth yeah but it is weird that what? when I asked uh, Lanell, uh, uh, you know, Lanel. I said it right that time. <laughs> I like how you try to whisper. I thought. You to let me say it fast so you catch me. <laughs> Lanell. <laughs> Whatever you want to be. You got me. You got me. <laughs> when I asked him. <laughs> so, but when we were talking earlier and I said, what is, what would you like uh, your credits to be? Do you have anything? And you're like, well, I opened for this, this, and this. You didn't say Kevin Hart at all. I didn't open for him. Yeah. I wish. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, this is interesting. I. Why would one. you burn any bridges anyway right now with Kevin Hart just in case? Well, because right. maybe it, that bridge is already fucking broken and he's like, fuck it. Yeah, but then something may have happened then. But getting into a public spat with Kevin Hart could actually boost your uh, notoriety. This is because... the Breakfast Club. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well you know, played. Just... <laughs> Just because, you know, if you get your, it, it, having your name mentioned next to Kevin Hart's in any sort of thing, it's like it bo- brings you yes, up. It on this your podcast that's up. live on Facebook. <laughs> yes. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, TMZ catches word of this and oh, it takes yeah, off, yeah. baby. Both of yeah, our followers got, give a shit. Have we gotten any questions? Uh, no, but uh, not any questions. I did want to say something, though. Um, one of uh, Jessica's friends, this uh, friend's family member, I don't know, it's uh, Cynthia. Yeah, it's my <laughs> brother's ex-wife. Um, she, this is going into the whole crazy story thing. She said, uh, Jessica, tell the Hog Lagoon story. Oh, my God. I think haven't I told that here? I'm just I, like I saying think it we plays would into remember the whole craziness. I don't if remember. If there was a Hog Lagoon story. Oh, <laughs> that's when you went to the Hog Farm? No, no, no. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's in the hog cannon, but it's not the actual lagoon story. It's a, it's a different chapter in the hog book. Under the hog, under the hog umbrella. umbrella. Yeah. Okay. Made of pig skin. It makes perfect sense. Like, right. It might have been the same farm, hog farm. Uh-huh. But I, uh, my brother got a new truck. My uh, his his mom got him a new truck. Okay. Uh, he was super stoked to have it. So the first thing he did was like, oh, I'm going to take this thing mudslinging. Right. What's that? Just mud and slinging just tr- mud with your truck. Wow. Okay. Spin out. And <laughs> I'm sorry, I That's didn't cool. know. That's cool. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got you. Jessica. Right. So uh, he takes it out. So he works at the hog farms, right? Uh huh. So of course he's like, well, I'm gonna go out there and we'll go mud sliding around there, right? So he does that, but then he ends up flipping his truck into a hog lagoon. Uh, meaning all the poop and pee. Poop and pee and water. Oh. It is a big gross. pool gross. of that. Okay, the, the the truck sinks. Right, my brother has to swim out. <laughs> <laughs> you the, guys are related. <laughs> yeah, of the hog lagoon. It doesn't even. Did he have a there. snake around his neck? It doesn't end there. <laughs> 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 because then he was like, "Okay, well, that's the end of the truck." But his mom was like, "That's a brand new truck. You're going back to get that fucking truck." Right. So they go down there and they get. Uh, I don't even know if they had a tow company or what. But whoever, if they did go down there, nobody is going to go down there and tie and, and tie up the truck. So my brother had to swim back down, <laughs> like dive under to yeah. pick it up. Oh my god! He was the first. He was the first awkward man. <laughs> uh, hook up the truck. I just sold my leg to not have to do that. Oh my god! Oh my I just wonder god. if anybody's driving that brand new truck with very low miles. But, oh how, but how, how was he able to see where the truck was? Goggles. Goggles. Whatever. I don't know what he used, but he he could feel around. <laughs> <laughs> That is four tough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. 
That yep. is disgusting. Anyway, okay, so what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> that is gross. Sorry <laughs> to throw that in there. That was great. <laughs> I don't think Ronnie's true. Okay. Because it sounds a little bit <clears throat> like a movie, and you that name Ronnie is for a girl is unique, and I think he pulled that from the movie. He gave a lot of details, though, like telling how the mom, when she hit her, right. that her the knuckle with the teeth. and I have no doubt that he's probably been in that situation before. Uh-huh. Something similar. But I don't think that somebody <laughs> would come in with a machete. <laughs> it sounds like a Jason movie. You know? I love when Jessica gets serious. She's like, <laughs> then my brother had to swim through some turds. Anyway, Lonell. <laughs> I don't believe. And you like put your thumb together like you're fucking Bill Clinton. Like you won't point your finger, but you're like. Where are you, where are you from? Uh, uh, I was born in Kansas, but yeah. I'm an army brat. That, that, yeah. I like that country. <laughs> um, so, uh, Brett, what are your thoughts? Hmm. I think that the Ronnie story is true. Uh, I because think it is the, yeah. details, the details I were, uh, they, they just seemed real to me. Yeah. Like why why the clothes in the brother's room why part? Why make that up? Yeah. That why why would you that make is, that up? That seems point. like that's a, a thing point. that would be real and you just remember. So I think that one as much as I wish Kevin Hart was an asshole yeah. and I wish that was true. I don't know him. I have no idea, but uh I think that that's that that's the lie and I think the uh the the Rambo knife story is 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 true. It's, Rambo it's true. Story. Yeah. Uh, it's a difficult one because uh, I remember when I started out, I uh, knew Roseanne. I already spoke about this on the podcast once when I was 19 in Colorado. And it's a weird thing when you meet someone, whether it's in Philly or Denver, Colorado or uh, Peoria, Illinois, and you're doing comedy. And then you get to L.A. and then there's this weird thing where you're like, well, this person should be my friend. Then they don't. And, yeah. And you're just on a different life path. And uh -huh. so on one hand. I could see where maybe Kevin was a little disoriented and trying to place you because he's seen like two million people since then. That could then. happen. Yeah, yeah, I could see where that could happen. Yeah. And I could see <clears throat> by you telling that story, I don't think you're saying that he was an asshole by any means. Mm -mm. I think it's just that's what happened because uh, I know when uh, the time uh, I had seen Roseanne after she uh, started doing very well and we went to go get a fat burger together and she said to me, we already said it on the podcast about, you know, that everybody wants something from me. And I just made this decision like I'm never going to ask her for anything. And then I never got anything from her. <laughs> you, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. But that's a decision that I made. And I and I think it is a a, a true feeling of hey we started back in the day together and you're not doing anything for me because I've seen that play out with hundreds of comedians wow. and their friends you know mm -hmm. don't you, you, yeah, you right. see that play Absolutely. out you can't bring everyone along unfortunately so by you right? saying that I don't think it's that you're meaning it as a negative no, but all. it's a it's a little weird thing like why do you give everything to everyone else and not to me <coughs> but uh, uh, that being said I I kind of feel like the Ronnie one is true because you gave way more details of in the moment. You know, I do think that you did know Kevin Hart uh, back in the day, and you guys are probably still friends. Yeah, but the details. You're getting me with the details. Don't make me trick you into <laughs> voting my way. Cause, cause no, I'm, I'm going to stick not... with my story because okay. I want to. I want to be able to imagine Kevin Hart in a speedo. Can I tell oh real quick God. a mm -hmm. just a real quick story of about course, a, about a, a a famous comic snubbing me? Uh huh. I was uh, I just did did road comedy before I came out here, so uh -huh. I did all these midwestern shows for all. The, I was doing uh, uh, some like hotel lounge weekend right. club. You know, it was in uh, Fargo, North Dakota, and I was opening for Michael Winslow from the uh, Police Academy movies. Right? Oh, so I was thinking of. No, the Steve the, Urkel. The right, guy. Right, yeah. And at the end of his uh at the end of his sets he would meet his public and sign like headshots and stuff. If you bought a headshot, he'd autograph it for uh -huh. you. And uh so uh he's he's finishing up his set. I open for him, he's finishing up his set. And uh, he gets done, and the MC is up there talking, and he sits down at his table with his headshot. And I walked up to him, and I because we hadn't officially met yet, and I'm like, "Hey, man, nice show." And he shakes my hand, and he and he goes, 
oh, hey, thanks for coming out. Thanks. Uh, can I get you an autograph or anything? And I'm like, dude, I just did 30 minutes of comedy in front of you. Oh, did yeah. you say that to him? No. Yeah. I was just like, what? But he right. just was so like, he, it was just fun. Own, he was just in, in his own head. In his own head, yeah. But it was also just funny. Like, what? Dude, I literally just opened for you for 30, I, by I 30 know, minutes. I know right. that feeling. It was and just people funny. people change within, uh, no, no, that's a He good felt story. bad about it afterwards. Right. I, I I'm gave sure him shit about it the yeah, whole weekend. Yeah. But it was, but it was like, dude. I have what? a story like that where I was uh, at the Ice House and it was, I want to say Arsenio was there and Carlos Mencia. And I've known Carlos Mencia since I'm 21 How long ago years. was this then? This is about two years ago. There was a group of people, you know, hanging out at the Ice House and uh, Carlos had lost a lot of weight. And I swear to God, I was standing next to him for 10, 15 minutes before I realized, oh, the fuck, that's Carlos. And so it's just because he, you know, so much time. I hadn't seen yeah, him in yeah, seven yeah. or eight right. years. And time passes. And this is a guy yeah. that I used to stand here in the hallway and bitch about everybody with when he <laughs> was the door guy. You know what I mean? So, uh -huh. like, I can see if you're just, you know, you're in your own space and uh, that could happen. But that right. being said, I think the Ronnie story is true. <laughs> I, I do, too. Yeah. Ronnie, it's a lie. Okay, Ronnie's true. Ronnie's true. Ronnie's true. Ronnie's a lie. Like Ronnie's a lie. Okay. So what is the truth? <coughs> The truth is, Ronnie's the truth. Ah! Yeah. Kevin's the lie. I never hung out with Kevin in Philly. I, I never, oh, you never I, did? I never <laughs> met Kevin in Philly. I met you Kevin. You never did the church swim team? Never did the swim team. <laughs> I should have known better. I should have known better. <laughs> so See, here's the thing. And, and, and here's Kevin, the thing. Every time I met Kevin, I, I seen him a few times before, and he was always polite and positive. Here's yeah, the thing. He if we yeah. challenge an African-American man <laughs> on <laughs> swimming. Here we go. Here we go. That's some shit, We man. look like, like racist <laughs> assholes. <laughs> I still think that You know that, what I mean? Like, wait a happened. minute. <laughs> like, really you really and you said you were no, on no, the but, swim but, team. But, but to be honest, Kevin was on a swim team. I, 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 I just looked that up. <laughs> oh, you <t> <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, good. Right, right. Wow. This is awesome, that is guys. hilarious. That's a good one. Thank you. Good one. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm so, losing my touch, man. Yeah. Come on. So, Jessica, uh, who do you think is the best liar today? Lionel. Uh, sure. <laughs> well, no, but he the, but, the butt baby. Yeah, butt that's baby. True. He he fooled all of us. Yeah. If you're going so on, what about you that? You want me to reach you? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not the black guy. Yeah, that's kind of. He can't swim. <laughs> I, th I, think, <laughs> yeah. I just think because it was such a surprise. I don't know the things that he pulled that were true. Um, you know, right. I mean, Brett's story was very creative. <laughs> um, <laughs> as most butt baby I feel stories like are. Like so much it is a really good story. I don't know. Maybe this one's a draw. No, you should stick with your total uh, first instinct. Okay, I'm going with the black guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's what I came here for. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. see America. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> No. Wow, you guys have been excellent guests, and thank you so much for your amazing for stories for and your uh, bullshit lies. And where can people catch you guys? Uh, Lionel Dalton uh, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Yeah. Okay, great. And what about you, Brett? I am on all of those. Uh, also, I br uh, at I Brett my pants. <laughs> you can follow me there. <laughs> and uh, see what I'm up to. I also work here at the comedy store, so I'm here a lot. Yes, yes. you are. Yes, you are. And it's uh, Lionel Dawson is double L with Lionel at the end. Mm -hmm. So it's L I O N E L L. And uh, you know, I am allowed to promote other shows here. No, absolutely, go for uh, it. You can see me tomorrow night at the Ha Ha Comedy Club at eight thirty. And also, you can catch our Liars Club live, which is going to be at the Ice House February fifteenth. That's a Friday Woo. at eight thirty. That's going to be a wonderful lineup. Why don't Yay. you talk a little bit about the lineup, Jessica? No, oh, okay, great. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't prepared. Oh no, yeah, uh, we got Jerry <laughs> Garcia. He's going to be. He's amazing. He's always great when uh, I see him there. He's not the not the ice cream and not the the guitar player or whatever. But uh, he's. <laughs> Wait, so you're saying the ice cream isn't a real person? And, no. and the dead guys? That's not just not how, who we're having on February 15th. Jerry really is amazing. <laughs> he's so funny. Yeah. He's very funny. Uh, yeah, he's such a great uh, We have Earl coming back from the podcast. Earl Skakel. Earl Skakel. You know, he's one of our uh, MVPs from the Liars Club. So <laughs> Ritz and a girl. <laughs> yeah, we got John Campanelli. 
John. He's going to be coming back, and he was. Uh, that was one of our best episodes that we had as far as numbers. Oh, yeah. Um, you we, know, John Campanelli is a great liar. He told me he'd put me on his show one day. <laughs> <laughs> Shots got, fired. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got Danielle yeah, Perez. I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got Danielle Perez. It's just going to be a really good it's show. It's going to be a great show, so come on out for that. And uh, Andrew, can you tell the people where they can uh, find us? And, uh, and and look for us to get all our back episodes and all that jazz. Yes, uh, if you want to go, uh, we are on uh, Spotify, Stitcher, um, Podbean, all that fun stuff. Uh, all the episodes are on uh, iTunes as well and Laughable. Uh, go to any of those. If you would, we would really appreciate it if you could give us a like, a follow, a subscribe. Uh, leave us a rate and a review. It would mean the world to us. And, uh, yeah, if you want to do that, uh, you can follow me everywhere at one Andrew. Did I miss anything? You Is didn't that- talk about your fucking book. My book, um, <laughs> you can find it at uh, arosecomedy.com. It is a joke book. There's a link to it. I am so You set me up perfectly for that. Uh, go to arosecomedy.com, buy my joke book. It's on there, uh, and I'm all, everywhere at uh, Andrew. Uh, uh, one, one Andrew, Andrew Rose. Rose. I'm sorry, Rose. I just the, the joke. No, that laugh. was amazing that that happened. That's the funniest you've ever been in front of me. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll be funnier. I'll be funnier February fifteenth at the Ice House. Yes, we we'll all, see. We all will be. I like your scarf. I have oh, thank you very yet. much. Cool. And uh, hey, you're hitting on the wrong white lady, buddy. I, I'm sorry. Hey, I like yeah, your right here. I get it coming already. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you guys can follow me at Felicia Michaels all across the board. I'm at Jess Wellington too on everything, and you've been lied to.